Hi, everyone. Welcome to another amazing topic of conversation. I want to thank my sponsors, the Health Channel. So please sign up for their letters and their Women's Health Fair, which is coming up at the end of March. Also, if you need anything regarding workspaces or a virtual office or, any, or a boardroom for just an hour, Alexa's Workspaces has everything you need. From the power of the heels, we look forward to seeing all women who dare to lead different for our Disruptive Monarchy event, benefiting the power of the heels on March 1st. So please go to our website, thepowerofthehills.org to find out any more details. And with that, I wanna welcome Dr. Bascom. Hi. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining us. No problem, I, my pleasure. <laughs> I know that you are in the process of writing a few books. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Not only one, a few books with very different topics. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> but one is very interesting. The other one is a fiction, right? Yes, and then I also am um, trying to um, convert my dissertation into a, a book that I will try to um, implement into schools and their leadership programs. So I'm also trying to tr convert that book. <laughs> wow. <laughs> so, but I wanted to talk about the codependency. Yes, I am currently... Um, You're looking into that you're looking into that and you're working on writing a book on codependency. Yes, ma'am. So I am so currently why? What 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 made you what made you write on no first go <laughs> back a little bit, not the why. What is codependency? Um so codependency is basically um when you have people who have certain traits or emotional behaviors in relationships, it could be any relationships, friendships with parental French um, relationships or with a partner. Um, some people tend to become obsessive. Um, they tend to be people pleasers. They have poor or lack self-esteem um, and they lack boundaries. So they don't respect other people's boundaries. And uh, my reason for going into um, or focusing on this book or journal, because I see that's more of a trend right now. So I'm doing a, a journal of, of, of overcoming codependency and I'm targeting teens, mostly like teenage girls or boys who have, um, you know, have that trait or, or those warning signs. Can you give me an example for, uh, of what a codependent in, in, in a teenage girl can be? Um, for example, you know, there are their hormones are developing, so they're trying to find out or experience what love is or, you know, any relationship, be it their friendships as well. And they don't understand the boundaries or, you know, like how their interactions are with, say, their, um, their friends. Um, if a person says no, no means no. Or sometimes they may think that winning friends is just to please them by saying yes, 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 um, even if they don't agree or like it. So that therein um, lies this low self-esteem. So they have all these different things going on inside them in order to put on that mask to embellish and you know get friends or get relationships. Why did you decide to write on this? Um, well, working in, in a school, a K to um, 12 uh, private school, and just being, I don't have any children of my own, but I do um, see like the, the children in the school are mine. So I, I do speak to them as their mind. I do have a couple of girls who um who uh, cling to me or call me their mom in some aspects. And I just noticed some patterns or behaviors that happen. And even when the pandemic happened and they had to come back into the school environment, they were home for like two years with no social interactions with people and coming back into the, you know, the interactions with their friends and stuff, it was hard for them and hard for them to interact, hard for them to understand the boundaries again. 
and stuff like that. So that's where the, the idea came from. And... <laughs> what are the challenges that, or I don't know if it's the challenges or what can you do about it to, to disrupt this cycle so they can, so they can be more independent and not codependent. Um, well, uh, coming out of the pandemic again, um, we see where the schools have implemented a lot of social econ emotional learning. Um, so this will tie into that. Um, so having more probably presentations or more workshops on it to help educate them to understand that they don't, you know, they can like themselves first before seeking or validate, getting the validation from others to feel accepted or wanted, you know, just coexisting in the world. But being teenagers, yes, it's hard. <laughs> they are very hard to, to get through. Like I yeah. call it, you talk this way, they talk here and you have <laughs> here a void that you cannot even get through to them. I find it easy to relate to them. Um, a lot of people say I'm a kid at heart. So I do, you know, I try to listen to some of their music, see what they like. I try to keep up, um, up to date with some of their trends and, you know, things that they would find interesting um, so that way I can still talk to them on the level, but still educate them in a way where, you know, it's above the level and try to get it to connect. So I, I try to, you know, not be a friend friend, but still motivate and mentor them in a way where they would understand. So now that you talk about the mentoring, mm -hmm. I wanna tell everyone that you have gone above and beyond <laughs> to help us with the Loving Me More program. It's my pleasure. That Dr. Bascom actually picks up the girls when they don't have anyone to bring them. Yes. She has driven the bus <laughs> oh my. because the driver didn't come one day. Yeah. So she is literally the force behind the program. Yes, so on behalf you. of everyone, I really want to thank you. My pleasure. Um, and, and I see the benefit in the program and they do love it. They do enjoy it. It, was, it is one Saturday out of the month. So they do look forward to you know, getting to see the different activities and stuff like that. So they do enjoy it. And whatever I can do to get them there, you know, I try. That is the hardest part because, for example, there's a lot of girls that want to come, but their parents don't let them. Yes, I so heard I a story can... of one that said, no, my, my mother says that it's not worth it. Oh. <laughs> and so I try, like, um, instead of sending messages by email or text, I actually talk to the parents on one-on-one -on -one if I see them through the carpool lane or if they come into the office or I call them, you know, and I try to get the girls too interested so they can tell their parents, like, I want to go. I had one who, um, she's been wanting to come, but no one to bring her on the Saturday. And then her first time was actually at the painting with a twist that she had in December and she loved it. And from then she, you know, she always wanted to come back. So just making the space, you making the space available for the girls to come out and engage and learn from the other women who are given back to them. It's, it's amazing. And I appreciate that as well. No, it's all about giving back and being able to reach out to them so that we can literally disrupt all the cycles. Yes, ma'am. That they're in to be independent and successful. What has been, uh, if you can say that, that between the program and what you're doing with the codependency, what is the biggest, the, the biggest factor that we can teach them? Um, your program says it all, loving me more. So if we can um, get them to understand that, you know, that it, it's them who, People have to, you know, they're engaged in the world. It's all about, not really all about them, but, you know, it's, you have to love yourself first in order for other people to love you. If you can't love yourself, then how can you expect someone to love you? So teaching them that self-love, um, the things that they need, how to dress, the etiquette, how to eat, you know, how to walk, the poise, posture, all of that is important. Like somebody said, 
we need to learn from the airlines when they say that that when the mask comes down, you need to put your mask first and then help others. Yes, because if you're dead, you can't help. You can't, so. Give me another example of what has been really challenging with with the girls that you you would like to overcome. Um, just keeping them engaged, um, keeping them engaged while they're some of them they're after a while as they say with any any person their age is really the, the number of minutes or seconds or so that you can focus so a 10 year old child after 10 minutes or so that's it Done. So, we lose them yes because their their attention span is about their age in minutes so after like 13 minutes you see them looking at their phones or they're talking and stuff so probably finding more hands on or more ways to get them into the activity instead of um, having someone um, speak only instead of having them um, do the hands-on, like hold the money, balance the book, or you know, like different activities like that, engaging. So changing topic completely. <laughs> no problem. Because I don't want to. I don't want to leave. I don't want to leave you before you tell me about the other book. <laughs> well. The, the fiction book. Yes, that book is also, well, it's similar to the um, codependency, but it's about finding your power again. So it's a fiction book <laughs> of a young lady who is reclaiming her power after having dealt, similar to the codependency, having, you know, not knowing herself, knowing who or what she wants in life, has always gone through relationships, be it with family members, friends, or partners. Um, and, and always end up being hurt in the end. Um, so it's a book of helping people to reclaim their power or women to reclaim their power after you know, the different situationships or whatever relationships in their life that have hindered them from growth or seeing themselves as worthy. And the, one, the thriller? <laughs> that one is, is still playing. <laughs> I haven't put a, um, a plot to that as yet, but it's more so like my dissertation. So those are the three books that I'm also working on, the journal, the fiction, as well as the um, turning my dissertation into a leadership book. But the dissertation was also about a thriller? A no. murder? No. no, no. That one was more, um, again, leadership, um, using a different um, model, a four frames model to help uh, those in the healthcare system. So that's a whole different spin. <laughs> Can you tell us a little bit about that one? Sure. Um, I, a passion of mine is training. So um, like you say, I like to help. So I'm a person I like to see others learn and I like to make sure that what they learn, they actually use it, receive it. Um, so that's my passion as well. So I do like doing trainings and workshops. Um, in leadership, emotional intelligence, communication, reflective listening. I've done a lot of trainings in those aspects with a lot of top um, companies like the United States Corps of Engineer, um, a lot of pharmaceutical companies, healthcare. So when I did my dissertation there, I interviewed um, all the top managers and stuff at one of the, I can't mention the hospital because then <laughs> at one of the hospitals in South Florida, um, and just hearing from them, like the passion they have and the things that hinder them from, yes, the training is a very um, lucrative industry, um, but then when the trainer leaves, do they actually glean what the trainer gave them to go back and sow the seed and utilize what they've learned to better help their patients, their co-workers and stuff like that. So, so your dissertation is about actually implementing what they learn. It's evaluating the training methods in leadership um, using four frames. So some people just focus on the authoritative style, but then they forget that you have to add the human, humanistic side as well, too. So there you can have all the four components in order to make a good leader or just some people focus on one style, the dictative. Uh, so they're dictating and using that authoritative tone and then they don't get any um, results in the end where they could mesh like two or three of the other leadership traits in order to be um, successful or effective in their jobs. 
So basically is a continuation. Yes. So <laughs> that you can make it happen. Yes, ma'am. So just making sure that, you know, say um, a person who is not in the health industry, but comes to teach them how to reflectively listen. They don't listen to their patients. They come in, spend two minutes and go. You know, so certain traits like that, if they're utilizing it within their workforce or within the workforce. Only in the medical industry, are you gearing it up to? No, um, I've also had patients within the police industry as well. Um, I have actually spoken to the training director in Tallahassee, the head trainer for the police. He was also interested in um, learning how the police actually utilizes the trainings that he sends to the different departments or precincts. And he was um, highlighting how mostly like the trainings that they do get is not what he sent. It's like more military um, trainings, like people who have went through the military and then become policemen. That's the training they would put on the police officers instead of what he's sending, which is probably more commu um, community policing and stuff like that. So hopefully de-escalating the whole brutality. Yes. Part of it. Yes, ma'am. So with this, I thank you so much. No problem. I know that you're doing an amazing job. And yeah, we need to teach everyone that it's not all about yes. Yes. There are some times when it's okay to say no. And that's the hard part because they feel that they're going to be left out. Yes. And that's the people pleasing aspect of the, the codependency that we talk about. Yeah. So with that, thank you. To everyone, stay tuned for next week's conversation. And above all, stay safe. Have an amazing day. Bye, everyone.